What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension overview for you. So in today's video I'm going to talk a little bit about how to use the extension Flux Tools in order to add commercial style glazing inside of your renderings. Um, as a lot of you know Flux Tools it has a collection of different dynamic components that make it really easy to model and adjust different windows and doors and other things inside of your models. I will note that Flux Tools is currently on sale. You can get more information information about that sale on my Black Friday page at the sketchupessentials.com slash Black Friday. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So I've talked about flex tools multiple different times on the channel before, but it's always been more in the context of like residential windows. So for example, if I use the flex window tool and I bring that in, you can see how that looks very much like a residential style window. However, you can also use this exact same assembly to create more commercial style windows. So what I wanted to do was just kind of rough out the shape of a building and then uh, kind of see what we could do with the different window styles and things like that. So to start off, I'm just going to draw a 35 foot wide by, we'll call it, we'll call it a 100 foot long footprint. So not a super big building, but something that we can kind of work with. And the first thing I want to do is I want to push pull this up probably about 16 feet, something like that, just to give us kind of a kind of something to work with here. And so now what I want to do is I want to start by, by dividing this into three faces. So basically what I want to do is I want to add in storefront on the first level. And so I'm going to use this uh, flex window tool in order to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give myself a guide. So we'll just use the tape measure tool in create guide mode and we'll create a guide where this uh, third of the building was. And so what I want to do to start off is I want to go ahead and I want to add a flex window. And it doesn't really matter where I add it at the moment, we're just going to click this in here. And so the first thing you're going to notice um, if you look at this is if you go around to the back side, this is cutting a hole all the way through here because this is a cut component and it and it's using the wall cutter functionality that's built in here in order to do that. Well, what I want to do is I want to adjust this by clicking on wall cutter, turning my cut depth to one so that it's only cutting through one face instead of two. And so now what I want to do is I want to use the scale tool and I want to push pull this out or scale this out to this corner. So I will note that the wall cutter can be a little bit weird. That more has to do with the dynamic components functionality built into SketchUp than Flex Tools itself. So you do have to play around with this every now and then just to make sure that everything cuts the way that it's supposed to. So I want to scale this out so that it's about level with this line, plus or minus, and also so that it's about level with the corner. Um, so just just so that we've got a piece of storefront in here, and I also want to scale it up so that it's uh, about the full height here, maybe a little less than the full full height. So maybe something like this. And so you can see how now what this looks like is this looks like just a window in here, like a giant window with this sill, and we don't necessarily want that because this wouldn't have a sill in this application. So what I want to do is I want to right click on this and under dynamic components I want to adjust the component options. So the first thing I want to do when I do this is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn my sill down to nothing. So I'm just going to set everything having to do with my sill to zero. So you can see how now what this has done is this has removed that sill in here and now this looks a lot more like a commercial style window. And so the next thing I want to do with this is I want to remove the horizontal distribution or the horizontal split in here. So I'm just going to go into the H distribution. This may actually be the vertical. Um, let's go to the vertical and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set that to one instead of two, meaning this isn't going to be divided anymore. Nope, I was right the first time. So we'll go back and we'll set this to one division and we'll set our horizontal division or we'll set this to two we'll set our horizontal division to one and we'll click on apply and so you can see how when you do this what this does is this generates this um this generates this piece of glass now with a single vertical division and so one thing I want to do with this is I want to have little brick columns in here. So I actually want to come in here and I want to draw a line that's going to be about six inches this way and 12 inches the other way. And then we want to go ahead and we want to reselect our window. And I'm going to rerun this so that it's level with this edge right here. And so it's going to cut an opening right here. And the reason that we're going to do it that way is because then we can make a copy using the move tool in copy mode across here 
level with the other point that I drew. So something like this. And so one thing this is doing right now, and we can leave it this way if we want to, or we can adjust it. What it's doing right now is it's giving us a recess inside of the wall. So that's being set based on your wall inset. And so what I want to do is I want to go ahead and I want to select both of these windows and I just want to set the inset to zero. So that way they're not inset in the wall. So what I want to do is I want to draw a little line here that's six inches in and then I want to scale this window on the edge so that we're level with that. And you can see how every time I adjust this, this is going ahead and this is cutting an opening in the wall. And then the other thing I want to do is I want to use the move tool in copy mode and I want to make a copy of this window and I want to move it over by 12 inches. So then I'm going to use the scale tool to scale this inside just like we did on the other corner. So, so then once I've got these three windows over here, I wanna go ahead and I wanna bring in another copy of those and place them along this sidewall. And so probably the easiest way to do this is instead of moving this, because if I use the move tool in copy mode, actually that looks like it worked fine. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll go ahead and we'll move a copy of this here. And I'm gonna move this down about six inches. And then I'm just gonna use the move tool in copy mode to create a number of different copies. So we'll go ahead and we'll take this full width plus 12 inches. So that'll be 11 foot eight inches. And we'll just type in a value of something like times five or times seven. So you can see how you can easily create this commercial style glass in here with no problem. And so what I wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and create another level. And so it's probably gonna be easiest um, and I may come back in here and add glass to the other sides of this, but for now it's probably gonna be easiest for us to go ahead and take this whole thing and just put it in a group. And then we'll just come up here and draw another level. So for this level, we'll go ahead and we'll say that it's gonna be a rectangle that's 12 feet wide. And for this one, I wanna go ahead and I wanna figure I've got some balconies in here. So I'm just going to split this face like this, and I'll just push pull it back something like six feet. So now what we have is we have a balcony space in here, and then we can just use flex tools to add a couple windows. So I'll just add a window right here. And for this one, I'll set it to an inset of zero. I'll go ahead and I'll set my horizontal divisions to three and I'll set my sill to zero again because I don't want this to have a window sill. And so I'll go ahead and click apply and you can see how what this has done is this has added this window in here really easily. And don't forget to go in with your wall cutter and reduce the depth so that this isn't cutting through both faces over here. So then I can just take this and make a copy just like this. And then we could also add a door to our balcony. So now what we have is we have a balcony in here with a pair of windows. And then let's say that this also was gonna have some other windows in here. Actually, I like these. So I'm just gonna make a copy of this one. And I'm just gonna move this over here. And you can see how the cool thing about this is this is going ahead and retaining that wall cutting functionality. Well now I can take this and I can just make copies of it. So I can make copies of this using the move tool. So you can see how this is really easy to go ahead and create that copy. And if you wanted to, you could also put a couple of them on the front side of your building. And for this one, maybe I would just scale this window out to give it a little bit of detail. And I would just set this with more horizontal divisions. Whoops, or vertical divisions. So you can see how the dynamic functionality of this tool makes this really easy to use. And then I'm just gonna take all of these, make a copy. And then I'm gonna flip them using the scale tool. And I'm just gonna level these. I'm just gonna move them back on the face of this wall. And you can see how what these do is these come in here and these cut this opening really easily. So, and these two right here probably need to get moved up just a little bit so that they're level with the other windows. But then we'll just take this whole thing, we'll make it a component, 
and then we'll make two more copies of that. And then you do have to pay attention because you can see how as soon as I made these a component, for some reason these uh, walls deleted out. And so again, I don't think this is a, a flex tools thing as much as it's a weird thing with SketchUp having to work with dynamic components. So all I did is I just came back in and redrew the wall and re-added the door. But I will note this does happen when working with dynamic components in general and it'll also happen with the wall cutter. So that is something you have to be aware of. I have never found it to be a huge deal but it is something to just look out for when you're working with any kind of dynamic components in general and so real quick I'll just add in and one thing that didn't get included in here is a balcony so we'll just model out a balcony real quick we'll say it's six inches thick and we'll use another flex window to create our balcony so for this one, we're gonna do things a little bit different. So we're gonna stand this window up. We'll rotate it so it's standing up and we'll go ahead and remove our sill again. We'll set our inset to zero. We'll also set our frame to zero. So now this is just a rectangle with glass in it. So we'll just take it and we'll place it up here and then we'll make a copy of it and we'll rotate it. And then I'll use the scale tool to move this back across. So you can see how I'm able to use this to create a glass handrail inside of this balcony component. So I can take these two and I can copy them. And then I can do a control V to paste them. And then for this one, because it's part of this full balcony assembly, we'll just make a copy of this all the way up here. So I'm probably gonna go in and add some materials and clean this up a little bit, but you can see how using flex tools, flexible windows, and also the doors, it's really easy to come in here and create. It's really easy to come in here and create different kinds of window assemblies depending on what you're trying to do. So that's where I'm going to end this video. If you're interested in flex tools, you can check that out on my Black Friday page at the sketchupessentials.com slash Black Friday. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this extension, what you think about this workflow. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.